Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So before you draw any conclusions on this video, I request you to watch this video till the end so that you understand what I'm actually trying to convey. Now why you should believe me on this? There are two important reasons. Number one, the most important one. Towards the end of this video, you will not see me selling any courses. You will not even see me endorsing any platform. So this video is not a clickbait. Number two, my experience. I'm working as a software engineer for the last 11 years. I started my career as a Java developer, support engineer. Then I moved to Python. Then I started working as a Golang developer. For the past seven years, I'm working as a Golang developer. And my last assignment, I was leading a team at Red Hat, which was responsible for developing an OpenShift plugin, which is related to OpenShift GitOps. Apart from all of this, I maintained three open source projects. So I was maintainer of one Kubernetes ingress controller and two Kubernetes operators related to Argo project. So overall, I have a very good experience and I understand the things that I'm talking in this video. So again, make sure you watch this video till the end. So let's get to the thumbnail. Why do I call it end of development? Let me take an example. You see this application here? It just took me a single natural language prompt and access to the GPT-5 model to get the complete source code of this application and to run this application on the local host. And overall, it just took me two minutes of time. Now you might say, but Abhishek, this application does not have authentication. This application does not have multiple levels. And this application does not have the basic development features. Trust me, it just took me another two hours to get all of them. Now this application has authentication. This application has multiple levels. And this application has the basic development features. But here is the catch. I can do all of it, but I cannot put this application in production with the knowledge of LLMs. I cannot sell this application to tons of users through my website or through a mobile game application. Why? That is because large language models today through AI agents or agent AI framework, they can help you get the source code of the application, but they cannot ensure application is highly scalable application is highly available. They cannot even ensure application is deployed to the production and accessible to tons of users. All these things have to be done manually today. And that is done by DevOps and cloud engineers or SRE engineers, platform engineers, ops engineers, whatever you would like to call them. Now, do I mean to say all the development jobs are gone? Technically, no, because no matter how powerful these GPT models can become, still you need engineers to direct these models. You need engineers to define the architecture of your application. And that will be done by developers with superficial development skills. Or developers who are technically too good to direct the AI agents, who are technically good to catch issue with these AI agents, or to architect the application according to your organization needs. So you have two options. If you are into development today, make sure you dig deep into it. You understand high level system design, low level system design. You are good at data structures. You can write very good code. So that can be a savior. Maybe even if the AI starts impacting developers, you can be safe. Or number two, start learning ops. Now it can be DevOps, it can be SRE, it can be cloud ops, it can be platform engineering, it can be AI ops, it can be ML ops. There are endless opportunities in this space. And if you are an aspirant, that is if you are a DevOps or cloud aspirant, then it is definitely good. As I told you, end of the day, as we move into the future, these job roles are going to play very, very critical role. The application that I've shown you, today DevOps and cloud engineers, with the knowledge that they have, maybe in two to three hours or maybe in two to three days, 
they can get the application into production and they can get the application ready for tons of users with their experience on aws with their experience on kubernetes with their experience on azure they can do it today so that's why no matter in which stream you are you should have basic operation skills today especially if you are a devops and cloud aspirant then you have endless opportunities in the future even you might have seen open statements from sam altman from open ai or zuckerberg from meta they are all talking about investing billions of dollars to set up infrastructure technically to set up data centers now who is responsible for maintaining these data centers traditionally it used to be system administrators but eventually it became a responsibility of cloud engineer so now if these companies start investing billions of dollars they would hire a lot of people even that is a promise from these companies that in future they are going to open more opportunities at least in north america region and they are going to open jobs for a lot of people and these job roles will be taking care of deploying their models on the infrastructure training their models on the infrastructure it is ml ops or llm ops again an extension of devops and cloud so as i told you the possibilities are endless the opportunities are endless so make sure you learn about infrastructure you learn about system administrator you learn about cloud you learn all of these things so that you can stick or survive as a software engineer in the future i hope i put these words in the right way and i hope i was able to explain to the audience of this video if you have any questions or if you are interested in a constructive discussion make sure to leave a comment i'll be more than happy to engage in a conversation with you see you all in the next video take care everyone bye bye